The government is negotiating hard with the Senate crossbench over its revised family tax benefits plan. A short time ago, I was joined from Parliament House by three of them, Senator David Lionhelm from the Liberal Democratic Party and Independent Senators Jackie Lambie and Nick Xenophon. Senators, many thanks to all of you for coming in this evening to speak to us. Let me ask you each, first of all, individually, if you're inclined to pass this government package and if there are any sticking points for you. Firstly, Senator Lionhelm. Um, I'd be inclined to support it. There's overall a net saving of $500 million over the forward estimates. It's not that much. I'd like it to be a lot more than that. And this is mostly about winding back middle class welfare, which I'm very strongly in favour of. We have a huge budget deficit, which got, has got to be fixed, and, and winding back middle class welfare is a good place to start. But it's a step in the right direction, so I'd support it. Have you asked for any amendments or any trade-off in exchange for your support? No, I haven't. Um, I've said to the government, any time you want to save money, uh, the likelihood is I will support you. So I've said to them, the family tax benefit reductions are OK. Uh, I think that uh, they should be pocketed for sure. I don't favour increases in childcare funding, better targeting, rearranging of the, of the eligibility for that, um, reducing eligibility for high income families and uh, deregulation or reduced regulation of the childcare sector so it's not so expensive and you don't need to subsidise it are the things that I've put to, uh, to Minister Morrison on this. Um, he disagrees with me on the childcare thing. Um, Senator Xenophon, what's your position on this? Well, I'm inclined to keep talking to the government. It's clearly a moderation of their previous position, which was incredibly harsh. I note that they've uh, changed the, um, the uh, ch uh, benefits or the reduction of benefits from 6 to 13, the, what I call the Macaulay Culkin Home Alone Clause. But there are some uh, measures to it that I'm concerned about. ACOS is saying that kids uh, will go below the poverty line in relation to this and it needs to be looked at holistically. I understand the government wants greater participation uh, in the workforce and that's hence the childcare package is tied to this but I'm also worried that at the end of 2017 we could be looking at 200,000 jobs being lost uh, mainly in the southern states of South Australia and Victoria uh, with the demise of the auto manufacturing sector. Senator Lambie, how about you? What's your take? Uh, well, do you know what? There's already 600,000 kids living below the poverty line. That's that's the first thing. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to take it from the very super poor and um, put it into a childcare package when you should be taking it from the super rich. Now, I've spoken about the financial transactions tax where there are six high-frequency traders in Australia, which accounts for 30% of the high-frequency trades in Australia. Um, and we could put a tax on them. I'm the only one that has proposed a tax so far, and this could raise well in excess of $4 billion over the forward estimates. And these are the same guys that should be penalised because they're actually skimming over $2 billion off mum and dad investors. I just, I, Jenny Macklin, it, it nearly blew me away today when she stood up and she said, this is a win. This is not a win because she's cut what they were going to take off them in the first place by half. That's not a win. You are still hitting the most vulnerable people in society. No one has done a cost analysis about what it's going to do to small business. A lot of that money gets spent in the small business in the area in small business where these people live. So, you know what, right now I'm not inclined to vote for this legislation, certainly not in favour of it, no. Are you prepared to keep talking at the moment? Senator Xenophon said he was. Are you prepared to keep talking or is it just a blanket no? No, I'm absolutely prepared to keep talking, but I want to know where the money's coming from and I don't want it coming from the, those that are already poor. I want to look at, like I said, either a tr financial transactions tax and I also want to have a look at Labor's super reform for the super rich because I think it has substance. To it. We know that the Abbott government has had uh, trouble getting its legislative agenda through the Parliament, particularly through the Senate. I just wanted to ask each of you to give a bit of insight into how negotiations have been going under the new uh, Turnbull administration. Senator Xenophon, you firstly, are you noticing any difference in approach? Look, uh, I guess the difference will come from any changes in policy. I, I actually never had a problem in uh, having access to former Prime Minister Abbott and the leader of the government, former leader of the government, Senate Senator Betts. Uh, Senator Brandis is doing a very fine job as a new leader of the government. Malcolm Turnbull is incredibly approachable, but to me, it's not so much about personalities; it's about policies. And unless the policy settings change, uh, then you may well get the same response from the Senate. The personalities are, of course, they're very important in politics and having access and getting on with people is important. Senator Lambie, how about you? What sort of access are you finding you have and is it any different? Oh, you know what? Personalities is always really important but um, 
unless you're going to change the policy, then nothing's going to change. That's the unfortunate thing. And I think this is their first test on this social services bill and they're failing dismally. Nothing has really changed from what they proposed um, nearly 12 months ago, apart from they've cut the costs in half. That's all we've done. So nobody is still winning out of this and that really bothers me. Yep, the doors have been open. Um, they seem to, the Liberal people seem to, especially the ministers, have had the pressure lifted off their, their shoulders, which is really good and they're walking around smiley, very smiley and they're a lot more friendlier. But once again, it comes down to the policy and the policies need to change. Senator Lionhelm, how are you finding the negotiating style of the Turnbull government versus the Abbott government? Well, the ministers are certainly off the leash. Uh, they're, they're not being controlled like they were before under um, Mr Abbott's prime ministership. And, and that makes them happier. They're talking to me pretty freely. I'm, I'm certainly seeing plenty of them. Uh, they're canvassing ideas, saying what might be possible, uh, discussing um, whether or not something might get through the crossbench. Um, so it, it is a different environment, really. Do you there have access direct to the prime minister? I met him yesterday for a little while. He is very busy. He's very new in the job, obviously, and everybody wants a piece of him. But yes, I got uh, 20 minutes yesterday. Uh, very useful. He's also agreed to come to the uh, joint crossbench meeting that uh, we are going to have each sitting week. And uh, uh, he's uh, quite a an affable, persuasive sort of a guy. So I think the atmosphere is improving. Let me ask you about a big picture issue um, that, that Scott Morrison and Malcolm Turnbull have been talking about. Scott Morrison in particular has said repeatedly that, that he thinks Australia has a spending problem, not a revenue problem. Um, is that how you see it, Jackie Lambie? Um, is that because they can't come up with any ideas how to raise revenue? That's how I see it. Now, they've got proposals on the table, like I said. I really want to have a look at Labor's super reform for the super rich. I think uh, that's got some substance to it. And for goodness sakes, have a look at the financial transactions tax I am proposing. You know, like I said, it's going to hit six of the highest frequency traders, 30% of the trade in Australia. Come on, at least they owe, owe, the, owe it to myself and the other crossbenchers to look at other options, but they, they're still not doing that. Where do you stand, Senator Xenophon, on the spending versus revenue question? To say that we only have a spending problem, not a revenue problem, I think is only telling half the story. I think Chris Bowen's superannuation reforms, as proposed, seem to be pretty sensible and measured. There's also legislation that's just been introduced into the House of Reps in terms of multinational tax minimisation. I think that's something that we should look at and perhaps strengthen. Uh, that could actually be a source of revenue when uh, some companies that have billions of dollars in revenue in this country uh, seem to be sending their money to uh, offshore tax havens. I think that should be on the agenda and we could be able to, we, we may well be able to get several billion dollars out of that each year. But uh, Senator Lionhelm would, even if all of that was embraced, that cover the amount of money that we're spending and projected spending? No. There, there aren't enough rich people in Australia who could fix the deficit. We have to stop spending. It is a spending problem. We have a deficit of $35 billion just budgeted for this year. It's costing us a billion dollars a month in interest to service our debt. Um, and we are spending more money than is brought in, uh, bringing in. We, the, we are a high tax country as well. When you compare our tax rate to Singapore, for example, which is a competitor to Australia, we're probably almost double. It, you know, we can't maintain that and uh, there, is, there is no more feathers to be plucked. We have got to stop spending money. Great to have all of you in this, this evening. Senator Lionhelm, Senator Lambie, Senator Xenophon, thank you very much. Thank Pleasure. you.